So this is my experience of how to teach remotely. That's for you as a teacher, you're having to self-isolate, you're at home. I found that in fact, I can have half the class at school, half the class in their own homes. As long as there's somebody in school to manage the classroom, we can actually have pretty effective lessons delivered from home. And I've got some tips and tricks that you can use and some technology to make that a better experience for you and the students. I had to do this, I had to teach from home at the end of last term, and it looks like probably at the start of the new term, there'll be times when we'll be teaching at home as well. All I'm gonna say will work if you're using Microsoft Teams or Google Classroom or even Zoom to teach remotely. I have another video which has just been released which is aimed at the kids' experience and how to make that better for them. So watch that alongside this one, but this is really aimed at the teacher having to teach remotely. And there's three levels that I'm gonna break down, easy, medium, and hard. So pick the one that's right for you and chop and change if you feel like that's helpful. I use a mixture of the medium level and the higher level of difficulty. So for the first level is just to make sure that before you start streaming from your laptop that you close down sims and you close down your email so there's no chance of any confidential information being displayed to students out there in their homes. It's not fair and it could be a breach of GDPR regulations. Or when you use Zoom or Teams or anything like that, when you choose to share, don't share the screen but share the document that you want the students to see. I think in fact though, if you want to share anything more than just one PowerPoint presentation throughout the entire lesson, you're gonna find that a more difficult situation to manage changing between documents or changing between cameras or visualizers than using one of the other methods. So if you're at least a little bit confident using IT, then switch to either the medium or the harder method. I don't think that you need to teach live for the entire lesson, but I do think that it's useful to appear live for at least a 20 minute period of a lesson. You can maybe see a lesson is being structured something like this. 10 minutes, the students have a task that they can do without you there, maybe using a quizzing app or something at the start of the lesson as a starter. Then you appear for 20 minutes and you deliver some new information to them without expecting much questioning from them. Maybe ask at the end if there are any questions, but set them off on a task that you're gonna collect in at the end of the lesson. That could be a Microsoft Forms or Google Forms, and you're gonna check that and use that as the feedback at the start of the next lesson. I think that you should probably be available throughout the rest of the lesson if they do have any questions, but you don't necessarily have to appear live on the video or be speaking live throughout that entire hour. That would be too much for you to do that five times a day. So next is the medium difficulty, and I would suggest that you try this one. Use a second screen. Now I'm lucky here that I do have quite a good setup at home with my desktop PC, but in fact you have a second screen in your house, almost certainly, that you can use alongside your ordinary school laptop. Try just plugging your TV straight into the HDMI out of your laptop. Or if you do have any computer with any monitor, you can use that as a secondary display from your school laptop. Now the beauty of using that is you can tell MS Teams or Zoom or anything just to share that one screen. And you know that whatever you are doing, the students are only looking at that second screen. So you can still have your email, your uh, notes, your PowerPoint presenter view, whatever you want on your main screen, and you can prepare things to slide across and drag onto the secondary screen and know that now they're looking at that. If you're in school and you're teaching remotely, you're teaching to people who aren't there in the classroom, then you can just use one of the whiteboards. So just plug in as normal, sit and face the whiteboard and use that and know that the kids are looking at whatever you see on that second screen. I think that's a really useful thing and I would recommend everybody to use that method. Now I do have a pen display and I have a review of this particular one here. I find that particularly useful because I can annotate over the top of a PowerPoint and know that the kids are then seeing my annotations live in front of them on their screen. And that can be really useful to allow you to adapt and respond to questions that come up in the lessons that you didn't have prepared on your PowerPoint. But if you've at least got that second screen and you wanted to maybe write something into a PowerPoint to respond to a question that somebody's asked or find something on the internet to show on that second screen and display to your whole class, at least you can do that on your main screen and drag it across so that the kids aren't watching you prepare something, they're just seeing your kind of answer, your response. So I would definitely recommend using that second screen to make sure you can keep things private and you know exactly what the kids are looking at. Now the hardest method, but perhaps the most functionality if you really want to get Wizzo with this, is to use OBS. Now, open broadcast software is free and you can set up what's called a virtual camera. And that means whatever you set up on your OBS canvas is being displayed like it's a webcam to the software that you're using. So you just select the different camera, you select OBS virtual camera, 
and therefore you know exactly and you can control exactly what is on that screen. And you don't need to drag and drop, you can set up different screens and you can seamlessly change between, let's say your visualizer camera, your PowerPoint display, your web browser or your webcam. And you can have a mixture of all these different things on screen at any one time. Perhaps you want to have a PowerPoint on half the screen and your visualizer screen on the other half of the screen. Well, you can do that in OBS. Perhaps you want to have a little virtual calculator that is actually part of a web page. You can set that up on OBS. So it just sits in the corner whilst you work. Perhaps you want to control the size of your webcam and make yourself larger whilst you're talking to delivering more discussion based areas, but make yourself just in the tiny little corner whilst you're delivering more important information. You can control everything in OBS. So that's what to try if you want to get really technical and you're confident using IT and learning new software, I would certainly recommend using OBS. Now remember, you don't need to be talking the whole time. I think when people teach live from home, they think, okay, I'm on for a whole hour and I'm just gonna talk, 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 talk. The students still need practice and they still need time to actually think about what you're saying and try and use it. You can direct them to learning platforms. We use Tasmai, we use it as the default starter. So while students are waiting for other students to join the room, for example, or waiting for you to start presenting, then that can be your starter and it's the default extension. So if they finish the task that you've set them in 20 minutes, but you've allowed half an hour, then the last 10 minutes automatically, they should go onto Tassimai to do their self quizzing. And the other technical situation that I strongly suggest you pay attention to, and you ask the students how this sounds, is have a microphone close to your mouth. It doesn't have to be a professional setup. It doesn't have to be an external microphone. It can be the one in your laptop or indeed in your visualizer, but make sure that is quite close to where you are in the room. Otherwise you'll get this echoey sound and it'll be really difficult to follow as a student. And you can get more advice on how to improve the sound quality in your live streams and your videos in these two videos here. I would suggest that you just occasionally ask the students how you sound and if they're saying, oh, it's actually really difficult to hear you, then try and solve that technical issue for them. And don't be shy of using the webcam. Remember, we still need to make personal connections with our students. So be available, be live, or at least be there ready to answer questions during that whole hour lesson that you would normally be in front of them in the classroom. Even if you only actually speak to them for five minutes of the lesson and you just direct their tasks, at least direct their time, make them feel like they're being looked after for that whole hour. And I strongly recommend using MS Forms or Google Forms as a simple free question exit ticket. Just one, two, three, very straightforward questions linked closely to your learning objectives that you can then start the next lesson with the feedback from. So I can see that you all understood questions one and two, uh, but question three we need to talk about a little bit before we move on to the next part. That's just good teaching. And give them whole class feedback. It's too much to expect yourself to give individual feedback on every bit of work remotely but you will still make those connections by telling them what you found they struggled on and need my help on and what well done, they've done well on. The last thing to say is if you're gonna take advantage of being able to stream to many classes at once, I suggest that you work in pairs at least. So if one person can focus just on the presenting, just on talking to the class and delivering materials in a clear and understandable way, and the other person can work on moderating the chat so the other person can be there to answer written questions at any time without having to interrupt the flow of the presenter. So if one teacher, and they don't need to be in the same room or even in the same building, can be looking after the chat box and another person can just be talking to the class and explaining things. So moderating and monitoring the chat in that way can allow more people to interact with the lesson than if they have to interrupt the speaker to get their question asked. I really hope that was helpful. What's working for you please let me know. I'm really interested and I'm working on a little project at the moment into the quality and effectiveness of hybrid learning and blended learning. So please do let me know what you're doing at your school in the comments below. What's working, what you're finding difficult. I'd be really interested to hear. Thanks for watching Gorilla Physics and stay tuned for more videos.